Hello and welcome to another thought for the day from New Milton Evangelical Free Church. We're working through the book of Joshua, but let's pray before we come to God's word. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we open uh, your word at the beginning of this new week, we pray that again you will speak to us, inspire us, thrill us, convict us, challenge us, rebuke us, lead us, we pray, Lord Jesus Christ. In your name we ask. Amen. So we're reading from uh, chapter 1 and verses 16 to 18. Then the people answered Joshua, whatever you have commanded us we will do and wherever you send us we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you may command them, will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. <clears throat> what kind of leader would you follow without question? We need to fill in a little bit of the story behind this. These people whom Joshua is commanded and commissioned to lead to possess the land of Canaan were not the same people who came out of Egypt. We're told in the sad tale between the beginning of Exodus and where we are today that the generation that came out of Egypt, all save two of them, hundreds of thousands of people had unfaithful unbelieving hearts that condemned them to death in the desert. This was revealed because of their continual grumbling against God and against their leader Moses whom God had appointed over them. Their continued failure to see the hand of God in the miracles that he'd done to bring them out of captivity and protect them and provide for them all the way through their desert journey. And ultimately, when they came to the borders of the land that God had given them to possess, and they sent in 12 tri uh, spies, 10 of those spies returned with good reports of the land, but terrifying reports of the inhabitants. There are giants in the land and we're not able to defeat them. Only two of those spies had the faith to hold on to the promises of God and those two were Caleb and Joshua. So who is this man Joshua and what kind of leader is he whom these people say they will follow without question? Well we're told in uh, back in Numbers that he is elected to be Moses' assistant and he is appointed to that office by God himself. We're told that he is a trained warrior and commander, that more than once he leads the army of Israel in successful battle against the enemies who attack them on the way. And if you read uh, the story in Exodus 24, you'll see something of that. And right at the beginning of Joshua, in Joshua chapter 1 and the first few verses we read about uh, Joseph's, uh, sorry, Joshua, Moses' assistant whom God had appointed to succeed Moses. So why was Moses succeeded by this man? Well, first of all, we need to understand that Moses was 120 years old. He had led the people out of slavery in Egypt, but he was now an old man. And what the people needed, and God saw that they needed, was a younger man, a commander of a battalion of hundreds of thousands of warriors to lead them forward to possess the promised land. Moses had done his term of office and it was time for Joshua to take the leadership. What kind of man was he? Well, he was a warrior, as we've seen. He was Moses' assistant, but chiefly we see that he was God's man 
for the time that he had been appointed to be assistant to Moses in more than one respect. We read elsewhere that when Moses was being spoken to by God at the tent of meeting, when Moses left the tent, Joshua stayed behind. And what he did was to serve the tent of covenant. In other words, he was a man with a heart for God. And this is why God has trained him up for this particular task and this time. And when the people see on the verge of the Jordan, as they prepare to possess the promised land, that it is Joshua who will lead them, they without hesitation follow his lead. You can see that unquestioning commitment to his leadership. Why so? because he is the man God has chosen for the task. So what are we to take from this? Well, your Joshua is Jesus, is it not? He is the Lord of your life. He is the captain of your salvation. He it is who leads you forward into your living, all of your years, all of your days, and he takes you forward to realize the promises that God brings you as his child to fulfillment. It is Jesus who is your commander. It is Jesus who is the possessor of the land he has won because of his victory on the cross and in the resurrection. It is he whom we follow and we do so with the same commitment that these people have. We will fully obey Jesus only may the Lord your God be with him. Well, he is, isn't he? He's God's son. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you command them will be dealt with, will be judged. Jesus the strong, Jesus the courageous. Here he is, this noble Lord of all who actually goes out before you. But there's another thing to say here, because God has appointed leaders in your church as well. And you are to have the same submission, the same obedience to those leaders in that they lead like Jesus leads. Who are the men who you will follow when they are appointed to lead you in your commitment to your fellowship? Well, they should be these elders whom God appoints in your church. Men who obviously reflect the character of the leader who is your saviour, your Joshua. So here is my challenge to you this morning. Are you following? Are you faithful? Do you believe the promises of God as he brings them to you? Do you follow your leaders as they lead you forward into the possession of those promises? Then you will have victory. Then you will have good success. The world arrayed against you. All of the uh, legions of the evil one. Uh, fighting pitched against the purposes of God in Christ but he will overcome because he is God's appointed leader for you. Let's pray. Gracious Lord we ask that we might see indeed this victorious captain of our faith who has already obtained the victory over the world, the flesh and the devil and we pray that by our faithful living according to his promises and in his power, we may be certain of the victory that he brings us. Help us to see his lordship over our lives and his captaincy over the whole of the world being realised as we move forward in this new year. In his name we pray. Amen.